Welcome to all you saints of Serp Town Church. We bask in the glow of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the greatest event, historical event, that this world has ever known. This week we're looking at the question, what does Easter mean to me? And a variety of staff and lay people from our church are answering this question. And I'm going to endeavor to do that here at this time. I think this is a great question uh, for me and for us as staff and pastors especially because we tend to get into the habit of thinking uh, more not globally but in the larger context of the congregation and uh, what events in the Bible mean and we endeavor to interpret them for the congregation for our flock what does Jesus teachings mean how do we apply those to our lives and, uh, and again, to the larger flock. And so this is a good question to remind us pastors and me that uh, what does Easter mean to me? And I thought about that. What does Easter mean to me? And a lot of different words came to mind as uh, eternity, as uh, redemption, as salvation, as new life in Christ, joy, peace, uh, grace, uh, faith, all those kinds of words came to play in my mind. But there's one word that I just could not shake, and that word is hope. Easter means hope to me. Now, let me put on my pastor hat here real quickly and let you know that hope, uh, Christian hope, biblical hope, is not the same as a worldly pagan hope. The world understands hope in one way. We understand hope very differently. And so the world's way of hope is like this. Boy, I hope I get that bicycle for Christmas. I hope he gives me that ring on Valentine's Day. Uh, I hope that car bill, repair bill isn't too high. I hope I get that pay raise. Boy, I sure hope we get an income tax refund this year. And so this is a maybe kind of hope, an iffy kind of hope, a, a hope that's maybe 50-50, could be good, could be bad, really don't know. Biblical hope, Christian hope, however, very different. Because that is hope that's not maybe, but it's a hope that is true, certain, it's sure, it's definite. No equivocation, no maybes, it is definite it is reality. And so, for me, Easter is hope. And that hope covers a variety of aspects of my faith and walk with Jesus. So, first of all, Easter is hope um, that by God's grace and my faith working together, I am made righteous in God's sight. And that through the events of the Good Friday, through Easter, the death of Jesus on the cross, the resurrection, the empty tomb, uh, that that paved the way and made possible my salvation, my relationship with Jesus Christ. And I stand now in right relationship with God because the gap between me and God caused by my sin and sin in general, the na sin nature, uh, is now been uh, covered by Jesus death on the cross and I am made righteous before God. Easter is also hope in that I have uh, not only a new birth experience but an ongoing relationship each and every day for life with God and with Jesus and that my life has been forever changed as I have allowed him and continue to allow him to have full control over my life. So I'm right relationship with God, an ongoing personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And then thirdly, Easter is hope because Jesus defeated not only my sin, but defeated the power of sin and defeated death itself and transformed physical human death into a doorway, a tunnel, a pathway as it were, into God's presence in heaven for all eternity. And so I look forward to death. Oh, it's unknown. It's a little scary. It's a little uncertain. But the older I get, as I have mentioned before, the more I long 
uh, for heaven. It, it, it's an interesting experience uh, for sure. And, and so I have that promise and that hope that I will spend eternity in God's presence, re reunited with loved ones and, and people that I've, I've said goodbye to these last 45 years in ministry that uh, I long to see again. And so there's much more that Easter means to me, much, much more. But hope covers it all. Have a great post-Easter. Hi, Sharp Town. I was asked to talk to you about what resurrection means to me. And that means it's about Jesus. And I love Jesus. And first of all, I'd like to give you all of you one big hug because I so miss all of you and hugging you. And I know when this social distancing is over, I have lots of hugs to give. But anyway, all that to say, I would like to talk about what this does mean to me. And I believe it's all Jesus and what he's done for me and for all of you. And it's this new beginning where he defeated death and there's no longer a sacrifice to be made. I don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. It's all been done. And it's where heaven really truly is on earth. His kingdom has come. It's eternal life right now. And we're living it. Even though we're in this world, the, the Bible says we're not of this world. And because of Jesus, we are now new creatures created in Christ to live and do good works. And when I think of the resurrection, I think of Jesus saying in John that he is the resurrection and the life. Pretty much everything is about Jesus, all of it. I mean, everything that happens and you look around, it's all about him. If you read the word, he says he's the truth, the way and the life. There's the life again. He is the res resurrection and the life. And so with a resurrection, it's taking the old and rising from the dead and making things new. And he starts with us in once we've accepted his offer and we are part of his family, then he transforms us and begins that transforming work in our lives where he uses his word, our prayers, and the people that he surrounds us with to help us grow and learn and be transformed into that beautiful creature that he talks about until we're called home. And I'm reminded of the newness of this, uh, this resurrection because I look around in um, my home outside the newness that has come while we've been quarantined or uh, sheltered at home, I take walks and I notice that what was dead through the winter has begun to bloom. Uh, the trees, I've watched them actually bud and bloom. The flowers have actually popped up and they're blooming, the tulips, the daffodils. Um, and it just reminds me of how he makes everything new. They're withering, they start to die out, and next spring it all happens again. But with us, we continue to just work our ways through each day as it unfolds, seeking him along the way for this newness and this refreshing start. I don't think resurrection is a one-time thing. I believe it's constant. Because with Jesus, everything is made new all the time. And I believe walking hand in hand with him through life has been just the, the best thing that could ever happen to someone because we're living that eternal life right here on earth and we'll walk it right into heaven. As Doug says, in a lot of times when people pass from this life into the next, they're transitioned. We don't, we just close our eyes here, but we open it up in paradise. And so I have to thank and praise my Lord for what he's done in my life and for what he's doing in, in all of our lives and for the offer that is extended to everybody because he wishes no one to perish. So I just want to just share how much I love him, 
how I think that uh, we're just we're made in his image and that this resurrection is something to truly be celebrated all day long every day because we can all be made new all the time it's never we're never at a loss for what we can do anew seeking him things are always new so when I see you next, Sharptown, I'll be sure to give you a real hug. Until then, have a great day. He is risen. What does the resurrection mean to me? To me, the resurrection means that the revolution has begun. Since the dawn of time, sin and death and evil and corruption and decay has reigned over the cosmos. The fallen nature of humanity, the old evil man of the flesh, the first Adam, the fallen Adam, is a part and built into our nature and dictates our every move. But with the resurrection, Jesus overcomes the power of sin and establishes himself on the throne of the creation again. So to me, a revolution has begun. It means that it's time to declare and proclaim, not just with our mouths, but with the compartment and the shape of our hearts, our attitudes, our thoughts and our emotions, our words and our actions, that there's a new king in town. Death, the devil and Satan no longer reign and Christ reigns. We have a calling. By the help of the Holy Spirit, we're called to be witnesses, to testify to the reign of Christ. And that's what the revolution is all about. To proclaim to the world, once again, through the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that Christ reigns. What better way to demonstrate in the world that sin no longer has control than by conforming to Jesus Christ than by leading a holy life in the likeness of Jesus. To not let sin be our master any longer. To do away with the old age of the flesh and to live in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. That is the revolution of Christianity. The fact that Jesus has risen again means the revolution has begun. Join me in rebelling against the powers and principalities of evil by being one with Christ through the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So to me, the resurrection means the revolution has begun. Hello, Sharptown. My name is Dave Graston, and I just wanted to take a moment or two to share with you what the resurrection of Jesus Christ means to me and the impact that it's had on my life. Webster's Dictionary defines resurrection as, let me get it for you, the state of one risen from the dead. And although I think that's a good definition and certainly makes sense, but my definition helps me to relate better to the resurrection. And it's just a one word definition. And that one word is simply power. In Acts 1.8, we read this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You see, in order for us as believers to receive this power, the Holy Spirit had to come. And in order for the Holy Spirit to come, Jesus Christ had to ascend, resurrect, and go back into heaven. This power that we receive from the Holy Spirit enables us to better serve Jesus and be his witness and do it courageously, with power, with confidence, and with boldness. One of my all-time favorite scripture verses in all the Bible is found in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And let me read it for you. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And the entire gospel message includes the resurrection. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation. Salvation can be both physical and spiritual. For the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jew and then to the Gentile. The power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ has helped me to overcome a broken and dysfunctional childhood, a lifestyle filled with addiction, and the power 
to overcome sickness and disease. But more than all those things, the resurrection of Jesus Christ has helped me to overcome death, and someday I'll have the opportunity to spend eternal life with him in heaven. You know, there's a lot of great men throughout history who've lived very good lives, and some of them have even died uh, for their cause. But there's only one man who's ever had the power to rise from the dead. So what does that, what does the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ mean to me? And how have I been able to apply that to my life? Just one word for you. It's power. I want to encourage each and every one of us uh, today. Stay safe. Stay healthy. But above all, stay faithful. Thanks for letting me share. God bless you.